Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Matrimony.com Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Antique Stockbroking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity to ask questions later during the conference. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Patik Kumar from Antique Stockbroking. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everything is, everyone is staying safe and healthy. On behalf of Antique Stockbroking, we welcome today the management of matrimony.com, Mr. Murugawal, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Sushant Pai, who is CFO. Uh, without wasting much time, uh, I hand over the call to Mr. Murugawal for his opening remarks, and then we will move to Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope uh, all of you are continuing to stay safe and healthy. I'd also like to wish you a very happy and successful uh, 2022. Despite the seasonal quarter, we have reported a reasonably good growth year-on-year -on, -year on buildings and a double-digit year-on-year growth in revenue. If this was due to strong execution of strategic priorities backed up by investment in the right area. In quarter three, on a consolidated basis, we have achieved a building of rupees 107.4 crores a growth of 0.5% uh, quarter over quarter and 7.3% year on year. Revenue was at rupees 108.5 crores, a decline of 1.3% quarter over quarter and a growth of 12.2% year on year. For matchmaking, the key highlights are as follows. In quarter three, the building was at uh, 106.1 crores, a flat quarter over quarter and a growth of 6.3% year on year. Revenue at rupees 107.2 crores, a decline of 1.8% quarter over quarter and a growth of 11.4% year on year. We had a 2.15 lakh paid subscription during the quarter, a decline of 5.4% year on year. ATV average transaction value for the matchmaking business increased by 12.2% year on year, and also due to, uh, this is due to good growth in our premium services. Uh, we continue to track the impact we create for customers. We are happy to state that uh, we have created 25,500 plus success stories in quarter two, quarter three. Now coming to the marriage services business, uh, revenue was uh, rupees 1.3 crore, a growth of 67.8 percentage quarter over quarter and uh, 194.4 percentage uh, year on year. This includes the consolidation of Shadi Saga for a full quarter. Losses for the quarter was rupees 2.86 crore, I can't 5 crore in quarter two. Uh, this was due to consolidation, the cost of increase. Uh, on the building and revenue outlook uh, for quarter four, uh, matchmaking building is expected to bounce back uh, to a double digit uh, growth, both the quarter over quarter and also year on year basis. Wedding service is expected to continue the current revenue momentum and uh, losses will be in the similar range of quarter three. Uh, let me now pass on to Susan to comment on the key profitability highlights. Susan, over to you. Uh, thanks, Mr. Uh, let me also wish a very happy and successful 2022. Due to subdued billings in September and October in matchmaking business, our revenue declined marginally on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, and therefore this had an impact on EBITDA margins. Our EBITDA margin in quarter three was at 24.5% as compared to 29% in quarter two, However, was better than 23.6% a year ago. Marketing expenses are at 41.6 crores as compared to 39.9 crores in quarter two. Excluding marketing expenses, our margins in matchmaking are at 63% in quarter three as compared to 66% in quarter two and 63% a year ago. The margins declined due to increase in employee costs and technology expenses. On a consolidated basis, our EBITDA margins in Q3 are at 18.6% as compared to 24% in quarter two and 19.1% a year ago. Apart from matchmaking, marriage services had an increase in employee cost due to Shadi Saga consolidation. On an absolute basis, EBITDA declined by 23.6% quarter on quarter and grew 8.9% year on year. 
tax rate is at 25.3 percent for the quarter pat profit after tax excluding astro which is our associate company is at rupees 11.6 crores a decline of 36 30.6 percent quarter on quarter and growth of 4.9 percent year on year share of loss from astro is rupees 15 lakhs our operating cash flow generation for the quarter has been robust at about 18 crores and our cash balance is at 318 crores roc is at 18 percent on the outlook for q4 margins we expect ebitda and pat to be at similar levels of quarter three i would like to end with the customary safe harbor statement certain statements during this call could be forward looking statements on our business these involve a number of risks and uncertain uncertainty that could cause the actual results to differ materially from such forward looking statements we do not undertake to update any such forward looking statements that may be made from time to time by or on behalf of the company unless it is required by law over to you prateek hello hello yeah thank you sir uh, Chris, you can open the line for question and answers. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. You will hear a confirmation tone that you have joined the queue. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We will wait a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from Prakash Kapadia of Anivet Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions. Now, if I look at uh, nine month sales, they are up around seventeen percent at three point two three billion. Ad spends in the same period are up around twenty one percent at 1.18 billion so you know when does this you know change will it be more price increases going forward so you know absolute sales value decreases or there'll be some you know reduction in ad spends uh, which could happen in the medium term what is happening you know at an industry level what are we sensing any visibility clarity on some of the ad spends which are still you know higher than what we would have wanted it to be so if you could give some color on that yeah thank you uh, uh, for asking the question uh, in terms of uh, the outlook on marketing uh, uh, the marketing continue going to be at uh, the, the higher level uh, because uh, you know the uh, the category of this new stop in uh, no uh, the decrease in uh, the ad spend of the competitor uh, because there's a good market spend happening at the item level Uh, if not for that, uh, obviously the marketing spend will be at a higher level. So obviously when the competitor is spending uh, uh, at a certain level, uh, at a level in this case, uh, we need to uh, you know, set up our marketing some other ways. So if not, the target is to set up the marketing spend at a higher level, at a better level. In terms of the growth, uh, while we are uh, almost like last uh, five quarter, we are uh, the last quarter we are uh, continuous double digit growth. Last quarter was one of the quarters we are uh, single digit growth. However, we want to have double digit growth uh, this quarter. We expect our growth to continue on a double digit basis. So we look at the continue to to you know uh, grow and uh, continue to to widen the gap between us and other players in this field. So only maybe at the second level, the market is still may come down uh, for a certain, but I don't know when because it's very difficult for us to say that you know the mid category that today's high end competitors spend whether would they continue for uh, in the short term or long term? It's very difficult for us to predict. But our as an organization, uh, our output is good, uh, our growth prospects are good. So we continue to mark figures, continue to build the growth. And the probably at certain point of time, the market is going to come down. It'd be good even otherwise. When when you continue to drive the growth, and over the other, the market continues to improve. Even if at the market is going, it's continuing to remain at the at at high end level. And, and again, it depends on how the the growth uh, possible is for us. You know, the market is going to further move forward. Okay, okay. And uh, we don't see a scenario of uh, the. 
you know earlier case of say absolute sales value increasing or pricing changes to negate or counter this higher ad spends uh, again we look at uh, look at r2 to see that uh, it has gone up by uh, you know uh, almost as you put it year on year grow by 12.5 percent you continue to figure out uh, what are the ways to uh, and optimize the price and all those things so price increase is one thing you know we are not under price increase we can look at the optimize various segments continue to some other segments so we look at the uh, uh, various ways to tell the output uh, but uh, yeah price increase uh, you know one of the things i think that something required to do it at a certain point of time timing is not on the sure that's helpful secondly you know if i look at you know data since our ipo in september 17 we've you know generated around 270 odd crores operating cash flow in the last four years currently also on an annualized basis we'll generate around 80 crores of operating cash flow so that's you know 350 crores of operating cash flow in the last you know four four and a half years since ipo plus there is a cash balance of over three billion rupees but you know for some reason our market cap is down 18 20% from ipo price so you know why not consider a buyback and you know ensure value creation and showcase the market there is a lot of value in our business you know why i'm trying to make this point here is you know unlike some of the new age businesses which have no cash flow no earnings we have a genuine business model genuine cash flow genuine profits over the years and you know as a promoter if you don't participate you stake further increases so that is just an observation okay oh, that's a good suggestion we appreciate that so sure, that's rightly said uh, you know it's a company it's a strong cash flow a uh, generating company and uh, uh, solid or shared in the past uh, the entire entity was built with a limited capital so and again the people pay in advance we, our, our ebitda to cash generation has been very healthy we continue to generate cash So the company definitely know that we are undervalued because the company. If you look at the key four, we are talking about the double digit growth. That means uh, we are getting the almost like uh, the pattern. We are talking about double digit growth uh, quarter over quarter, even year on year basis. We are almost talking about getting close to around uh, uh, 120 crores per of thing. That's a kind of building value. That means annualized, the company getting almost close to around the 500 crore of four eighty to 500 crore of that kind of. Uh, rent a company, and we are talking about uh, the cash balance and assets and all those things. As the company look at, uh, we definitely undervalue. We know that. So, and but we know that as a company leader in this space, we continue to drive and execute things, and uh, we have been, you know, and uh, started growing well this year. For the entire year, uh, we are double digit growth both on the building as well as on the revenue side. So uh, we continue to grow and continue to drive cash, continue to, you know, grow our market share. And uh, so we hope that at a certain point, time market realizes and uh, and rewards us uh, sufficiently. However, the question of the buyback and you know and that uh, and the board has to decide on you know what can do. So some probably can share his views on uh, the the question raised by you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know capital allocation is definitely that we would uh, you know continuously consider along with the board. So obviously, you know, buyback, dividends, they're all uh, form of capital allocations, and we'll have to evaluate it at an appropriate time uh, when the timing is right, when uh, we believe it may be a good idea to do something like that. So, uh, so that's the way to look at it. Sure, I'll uh, join back the queue for more. Thank you. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you. The next question is from uh, Vivekanand of Ambit. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, uh, Muruga, can you please talk about the market response to the new products that you launched uh, as well as foray into new markets? So it's still in a very early stage and both you know, uh, the, the, the launch of new products. It's still in a very early stage of human to have to have to comment on uh, those things and bangladesh uh, you know finally we're able to get the operation going and uh, we launched just launched uh, our tv promotion so uh, we just uh, launched our stuff yesterday again it's both are in very very nascent stage so it may take some time for us to understand and now the whole thing is going to be pan out okay i I'm, i'm curious to understand this uh, jodi app which is a tamil language app and i know last time also you had said it was very early 
uh, but any any uh, uh, color that you can provide i guess it was launched in early november so you probably are in the third month um, uh, how how many you know is, is, are there any metrics that that you can share or or any any sort of color that you can provide on the kind of traction that it is getting and how are you promoting this are you uh, are you aggressively doing tv ads in in tamil channels or or uh, is it is it primarily online marketing what's the uh, uh, pathway for acquiring users in that app so again it's still uh, few months only we can and because it's a november and it's a three months so still early and getting a customer feedback understand you know trying to get the product market feel and trying to uh no can talk uh get talk those things right and in terms of uh, the segment wise no is as a company as a policy we don't uh, uh, give the the segment wise the break up topic of run videos or matching money sites we don't give the break up we talk about overall concept as a marketing basis and also the form of marketing do a various the form of marketing uh, for all our businesses tv digital and other forms of marketing so as i said uh, still very early and we will be launch a key commercial in uh, you know in some now uh as in it's just it's just a just a one or two campaigns it's as it's still in the very early stages and uh, so nothing specific to share at this point of time okay so uh, next question is on the uh, strategy that we we had embraced uh say in end of 2020 which is uh, segmented pricing uh, which which uh, which allowed us to pursue a lot more users to transact persuade a lot more users to transact uh, are we uh, are we kind of going back to the original strategy of premiumization now uh, i mean we, we're seeing that the uh, transactions on on uh, matchmaking the paid transactions they have remained stagnant for the last 4 5 quarters so is is there a is there a change in stance as far as the segmented pricing strategy goes Now we continue to try various strategies and uh, see what is the right mix of uh, our proposals uh, and and uh, and the conversion. So we continue to experiment, continue to uh, to do those things. So so we continue to experiment both the things we have done and continue to try not experiment, continue to try one and segment each pricing, other and try to maximize. I think our strategy has been on the both sides. So there are quarters we see the output moving up, there are quarters we see that uh, the volume moving up. We continue to execute those strategies. Uh, to drive the revenue ultimately it's in the boost uh, drive the revenue okay and muruga what gives you the confidence of sustaining double digit growth uh, in you know uh, in 4q and and going ahead uh, what, what are you seeing in the market that uh, convinces you of of double digit growth now yeah, we are later in this stage we continue to gain market share continue to execute well and uh, we are definitely very confident of uh, double digit growth not in this quarter but uh, continue to you know kind of progress in the double digit growth okay uh, second set of questions uh, for sushant mainly so uh, sushant you said that uh, 4q uh, ebitda pat will be similar to 3q levels uh, why why this guidance given that uh, there there is a high chance of double digit revenue growth uh, are your costs going up uh can you give us some color on on the aws migration that you had done are are those costs in your base and uh, how, how should one think about the fixed cost now yeah so uh, so what has happened is there are two three factors so one is if you look at our q2 right uh, the billings did slow down a bit in q2 uh, or rather q3 i meant so which is now september uh, sorry uh, november december sort of a time frame it did slow down and therefore uh, you know the revenue for that the gap revenue you know becomes a slightly smaller than expected when the billing slow down the previous quarter which is the quarter 3 so that is one reason why uh, we are kept flatish uh, you know with the uh, and uh, pat the second thing is uh, you know marketing uh, may move slightly so that, that can also cause a bit of an impact uh, you know from uh, where it is uh and the third is yes uh, you know in quarter 3 i did and you too that the technology cost did increase a bit uh, that migration is going on so that some more cost will come in q4 as well uh, because it's uh, it, it it accumulates over a period of time so all three reasons you know the quarter 3 billing which did slow down a bit uh, which causes an impact on revenue for the next quarter which is quarter 4 slight increase in marketing 
and uh, as well as some expenses increase in technology costs. Yeah, just to add to what uh, Susan said, if you look at the Vegan and the billing with the revenue, the difference will be at least more than probably around $1 million, or maybe some that grow. That second half difference also will be there, and we expect that to happen so in quarter four because the funds Susan mentioned. So there's a gap of at least on the grow. We see that that's a possibility or not. So that's the kind of thing. Basically, uh, the building and the revenue, there'll be a, we see that uh, quite a gap because of the, the reasons uh, that Susan had explained. So that, that's one of the reasons of that. You know. Okay, uh, so Sushant, just to uh, understand the uh, margin evolution better, uh, X of marketing, will we get back to those 65, 66% levels that we have re we had reached uh, quite quite some time? I mean, the, just recently, right? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think as we uh, make up our plans for next year, I think we'll have a clearer picture on uh, margins and profitability because we need to look at the full year in the picture. But for the next quarter, I believe it will be at uh, sort of similar sort of a level uh, because if I said overall EBITDA and PAP are similar levels, then uh, and if marketing is slight increase, uh, which also means, uh, you know, excluding marketing also will be at very similar sort of levels as per Q3. But how it will pan out for next year, uh, we need to see the overall growth trajectory, what is the sort of investments that we'll be, make, we'll be doing, and we'll have more clarity on this uh, when we come back at the year-end results. Yeah. Well, 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 I just have to, well, definitely we have better clarity next year. But again, the nature of the business is well done, uh, because part of the market is a big cost. Definitely getting back to our 66 percent in a year as a revenue increase, that would happen automatically. Okay, so because... As far as that cost, you know, you know, like I said, to one that today when we quarter, uh, some costs are going up on account of creative organization and everything. But uh, achieve progress, definitely getting back to the margin of 66 for a year, that's absolutely not a problem. And as far as the marketing will be going to be the single largest cost in the marketing business. And uh, so I don't think, but definitely the better clarity, better decision next year. But if you look at the outlook, definitely the getting back to the margin will absolutely not a problem. That can happen in the future. Right. Just one last small data point. What's the cash balance, cash and uh, liquid investments in the current quarter? So it's 318 crores, 318. And and uh, you have made all payments for the Shadi Saga acquisition, right? Yes, uh, we have done all the payments. Okay. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Kush Kusrani of Ingrid AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, just to wanted to understand what is the uh, quantum of price increase that we have taken in this quarter? No, we are not in any price increase. So, in some of the questions whether you know, there is to tell the business, we are not in any price increase for a long time. So, will we be taking any price increases going ahead uh, since the advertisement costs are inching up for the next few quarters as well? Uh, we have uh, nothing on the cost of this product, of uh, That's helpful. And uh, in terms of advertisement cost, uh, how do you measure that these increased costs is getting us the ROI on the spend that we do? See, the most of the advertisement uh, is, is, is on uh, TV channels, and, uh, and uh, uh, while we definitely see some impact of uh, uh, the social appreciation going up and do the TV advertisement, but again, very difficult to uh, you know, fully quantify the ROI on the TV advertisement. So TV advertisement is more of brand building and, uh, and ensure that you know, brand has a continuous visibility and, uh, and also reach in the market. Also considering that uh, the increased competitive activities, you need to have a certain threshold of the market. And you know that some of the market are spending much more than what you because the competition in the market are spending much more than what we think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's required in our business. So sometimes it's tipped about the spending also required. So TV is more of brand building and uh, sustaining and uh, it does contribute to the profile appreciation to some extent. So if you take a pure ROI on TV advertisement, uh, you know, you cannot measure that way. So TV advertisement, is it necessary? Yeah, it, it is important to us. Whether this amount of TV advertisement, it has to, yeah, may not be the case, but however, at this point of time, you need to spend the kind of money. So, but look at digital, we do measure the ROI because digital is very easy to measure the ROI because, you know, you can directly link uh, the, the, the result of the, the effect of the advertisement order. The TV is uh, very difficult, but we definitely have mechanics to measure what, the, what kind of impact it does in order. But you can't fully 
uh, think ROI with the TV advertisement. It's a, TV advertisement always brand building long term, not uh, the particular quarter. Sure, sure. And uh, could you also highlight on in terms of the wedding services business, could we see the run rate now increasing for, to 1 crore per quarter uh, so you post the acquisition as well? Sorry, I was not. Uh, can marriage services uh, sustain the one crore uh, revenue per quarter post the acquisition as well? I think definitely should move up. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we have taken a goal of uh, possibly, you know, taking the aggressive goal of getting the under core revenue in three years. Three years. That's the, the goal we are trying to achieve. I have a lot to be done on that space, and uh, while the integration still happening, is not done yet. So, post integration with Shadi Saga, hope you will be able to drive much better numbers as well. And the losses will move back to two crores, uh, which we were had uh, one and point six to two crores in the Q2. Am I right? Yeah, we have to get to that kind of numbers. You know, we we continue to drive the growth and wedding services. Should good as it We have the internet. The goal is to kind of get into under crore in the next three three years. That's the kind of goal we are trying to achieve. And again, at this point of time, we still the integrate is not done, and uh, we just hired a national sales set of wedding services, which just joined us. And we hope we'll be able to uh, you know, continue to execute uh, and drive well down the segment. So we see definitely opportunity, and we hope we'll be able to continue to uh, we'll definitely able to maintain this kind of great wedding. Sure, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from Al Roy Lobo of Kotak Investment Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah, my, my question is more to do with the growth of the industry. You know, everybody seems to be spending a lot on marketing. We also seen, you know, recently you have put out something on your annual, you know, metrics on what's happening in the matrimony market. Uh, everything seems to be moving moving in the positive direction. The market is pretty big, but yet the industry in terms of size is still in the region of around 700, 800 crores. So I'm just trying to understand what is constraining this industry uh, to grow at about you know 20% or 25%, uh, despite all the efforts made by all the players to you know step up marketing spend. What is constraining the growth of the industry, you know, from uh, being much higher than it is today? Marketing is just one of the levers, uh, you know, for the growth. Marketing, you know, sometimes on a market alone cannot drive the growth. Uh, this year, uh, as I said, we are getting to annual basis about the growth and building and uh, revenue side. Our endeavor is to move the much higher growth. Well, as we progress, you know, we definitely move to uh, you know consistent double growth, and we are working towards taking to much higher growth. We believe that as we progress, we definitely able to move to a much better growth in terms of growth of niche. So, uh, so because it's not just marketing, we continue to execute well on various uh, diamonds and you know converts and other things. So we believe that as an organization, as we progress, we'll be able to move to much higher growth process. So do you envisage that in the near future, uh, you could actually see growth rates being much higher than what you're reporting right now? At least you know moving up like a hockey stick, or is it you know going to be more gradual in terms of you know the scale up in terms of growth rate? Because uh, whenever we look at this industry, the opportunity seems to be pretty big. And also, you're seeing significant amount of internet penetration. I think these days, even the youngsters want to choose their own partners. So everything seems to be moving in favor. So I'm not able to understand why this industry can't grow at about 20-25%. And uh, you know, what efforts, being a market leader, have you made to grow the market? Yeah, definitely. You know, we continue to make efforts and uh, taking steps to definitely move to uh, uh, that kind of growth rate. Uh, uh, whether you know that happened immediately or actually progress, but definitely we are in the right project. Okay, because since we've been the basically there for a long year, I don't see one quarter suddenly become an order, but definitely we see that uh, as a direction, I see that that's happening. <laughs> okay, whether it happen immediately in the coming quarter or maybe a couple of quarters down the line, but definitely we see that uh, as our growth tra trajectory at this point of seem to be uh, tending towards uh, you know better set of the double digit growth, and uh, I'm talking not about Q4, Q4 whatever get a double digit growth. We definitely tend to move in the direction. We definitely will see that as a company, as, we, as, as, as the direction we see that uh, we'll move into the much higher, uh, higher, higher growth percentage. Uh, also, one of your competitors have recently got private equity investment. Do you see any behavioral change in terms of pricing uh, 
uh, you know, uh, that has happened because of that. And given the fact that your other competitor is also bleeding, uh, when do you think, you know, uh, uh, pricing is going to move up because everybody, you know, except yourself is basically not making money in this business. So at, are we at an inflection point where you will see, you know, players yielding and, you know, prices going up? When you look at our pricing that uh, we are not except some market in a value or sort of to, to some sort of discounting or anything. I think our pricing has been sort of independent of the competitors because the majority of the market we have strong leadership and uh, we don't worry about much about the competitor price model because we have a strong reach, strong network effect, strong brand and all this. Look at our R2 also has been sort of considerably moving up and all the way. We do offer some discount or some segment. So in fact, our pricing is independent of competitors except some market, as for North India, where you have to resort to some bit of discounting because of this competition. But in North, North India, one part of market, but again, there are also a genuine market. So for us, uh, 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 as a company, the way our outlook is that uh, we continue to see that uh, our growth moment will continue, continue to uh, increase our gross margin, uh, excluding marketing. We continue to go to invest also for the type of growth that, that, uh, that we are looking at. And uh, so we're, we're, not, we're going to focus on our growth, our outlook, our future, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, continue to, to widen the gap between us and the other players. And, uh, and that's, really, uh, that's how we are seeing our uh, outlook. Part. And the last question I have is on the NRI market. You know, uh, when do you think that you will achieve, you know, leadership in that market? I think one of our competitors is ahead of you. Uh, and how big is that market uh, right now? The NRI market, you know, second personal because India is obviously much bigger market. The uh, NRI market is, is, a, is not a very large market. However, the NRI market, I don't, you know, the market is never divided, you know, for South India or certain market, we are obviously South and East or some extent this. Uh, even among the NRI, we have a strong leadership. One is for North Indians and, uh, say, Gujarati, Punjabi, where uh, yeah, there's one of the competitors has it offered in the last year. I think NRA, we may be equal level of uh, the other trade as well. It's not that easy. It's more like a certain segment, you are obviously strong reach. Certain segment, obviously, a competitor in the NRA market has a much better reach now. But next time, I think the NRA market, we are not uh, bigger than anybody else now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Mohit Bhagwani of HDSP Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Hi. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I have two questions. So one is on the ad spend. So we are doing about 160 crore annual aggregate ad spend, right? So you mentioned that most of the uh, spend is on TV channel advertisements. Now, I just want to ask, like, what are your thoughts on, you know, shifting this budget towards digital channels where most of the individual, individuals are? especially considering that the young individuals are spending more time on smartphones and social media. So do you believe that, you know, if you deploy other strategies like, uh, you know, the influencer marketing, for example, do you believe that, you know, you will shift to that strategy and, you know, increase your spends on, on, on that front? That is my first question. Yeah, basically, directly, uh, the, the, the budget, you know, kind of shifting towards the, you know, the digital side. However, at this point, can TV constitute large, uh, uh, Large, uh, you know, uh, uh, segment or large percentage of our uh, our ad funds. The TV ad fund has continued to be at the major part of our market fund. However, we look at the year-on-year -year basis over a period time. Definitely, we are increasing spend on our digital side, which has been growing at a much higher percentage compared to the money what uh, we on the TV side. So basically, we are still from large part of market fund. However, digital the growth our market fund on digital side is much higher percentage. So continue to digital So, so uh, do you believe that you know this this allocation right between TV advertisement and digital will change in the next two to three years? Do you believe that shift will happen? Say if it's if it if it is sixty forty, will it become the other way around? Will it become more of digital in the next few years, and you will be able to target more users uh, via that? Yeah, digital will continue to you know you know increase uh, spend on digital. However, it's very difficult for me to service time whether it's going to be you know will be other way around in the next two to three years. It all depends on, you know, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, how the whole thing is evolved, you know, going to evolve and how the competitors uh, spend on this category. There are multiple factors going to take it. However, as I said, directly, your digital is going to take, uh, uh, you know, uh, more share of our marketing pulse. 
However, I would see that you know in the coming years, TV continue going to be a large power market. Uh, sure. So my sir, uh, next question is on. Uh... Paid subscriptions, right? So we are doing about uh, 0.22 million of uh, paid subscriptions in a quarter. So just want to understand if you can give us a sense of, you know, how many of these are fresh additions. What I mean by this is like, you know, for the sake of simplicity, if you assume one user, one paid user coming in quarter two and taking a monthly basic package of three months, and if it does, he doesn't find a match, then he comes again and pays again for the third quarter. So he's actually a repeat a uh, customer of yours. So out of these 0.22 million in a quarter. How many of these would be, you know, kind of fresh additions who are, you know, paying for the first time uh, on your platform? So if you can give any sense of this. It's a few, between around, you know, 55, 45, 60, 40, that's a mix between the first time payments and the new so. So you are saying 60% would be like the first time paying and 40% will be on a renewal kind of users, right? Uh, again, it's, it's between, you can assume 55 to 60% is first time payment mm -hmm. and 40 to 40% renewal. That's a, that's a broad mix. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Nilesh Shah of Invasion Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Muruga. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Just wanted to understand, you mentioned initially that uh, billings were a bit soft in this quarter. Um, why would that be? Wouldn't this be like pretty much a normal uh, quarter, there was really no um, significant disruption or anything um, in terms of socializing. So why would billings have been soft in this in the quarter gone by? So there is a bit of inauspicious thing was there, you know, end of short period one thing plus also that uh, uh, the festival had an impact also, the Diwali and uh, uh, so the, the festive season. We definitely saw, uh, you know, while the Q2 was managed, normally the Q2 this is seasonally the week quarter because there is not a period. And some bit of the festival is and other things are in impact on quarter three. Normally for us, Q2, Q3 has been normally the little soft quarters. So Q4, Q1 are the best quarters for the whole thing actually. While not too large, it's an inactive period uh, in, uh, in a quarter three, but in some market like say Tamil Nadu and, uh, and uh, Andhra, the December middle is inactive period starts. It's called Margali in Tamil Nadu and uh, similar period in uh, Andhra as well. So there is a bit of inactive period that some festival have impact. So Q2 again there's another uh, so Q2 Q3 still had to for off it is softer and Q4 Q1 of the the the, the death quarter. Okay, thanks. Uh, second is um, Shadi Saga. You you spoke about an aspiration to get to 100 crores of revenues in the next three years. Um, do you think by that point of time um, Shadi Saga would essentially be um, profitable uh, by then, or it would still kind of uh, be uh, in an investment mode, and you would, and it would still be incurring losses then. Yeah, we reach that kind of revenue. I think hopefully it become profitable. And uh, I always have that uh, maybe it's an aspiration number. Okay, that's a direction that means that the next three years we have to get to the number. We taking the direction not start to get to the number and you know chase accuracy to the happen. Our revenue, you understand, revenue is hardly. And of 50 lakhs a month and all this. We definitely uh, we have a pretty long way to go to get to the number. But there is opportunity, and uh, I believe that we are able to execute well and able to move to that um, revenue. And when we read that kind of thing, uh, no reason we should be uh, uh, no losing money. I'm sure that level of revenue should be profitable. And do you think uh, getting to this aspiration, we can do this organically, or you think we'll still have to kind of pursue? In organic growth, even to get to this first aspiration of 100 crores in revenues, I think we can do it organically. Uh, 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 so, without uh, I think Salsa integration, I think we call the second cloud, uh, the required the strength in the product team. I think we can ever do it organically. Okay. And the last one is essentially uh, what one of um, the participants mentioned about, you know, buyback and. I strongly urge you to basically, um, you know, consider a buyback given the kind of cash that we're sitting on, the market cap that we have. The cash that we have is probably in terms of high teams, in terms of our market cap. So I strongly urge you to consider that. You are the principal shareholder. You are the CEO. You are the managing director. I'm quite sure the board is going to be guided by what you think and what you suggest. So I would strongly suggest that we get there, especially if we don't have any significant, uh, you know, uh, plan for inorganic growth. Thanks, Nilesh. Appreciate the suggestion. Thanks, Munga. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
The next question is from Sonal Minar of Present Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Sonal Minar. Uh, I had two questions. First one was uh, just wanted to get some sense from a three, four year perspective on uh, uh, the average age of a user on your platform, uh, which direction has uh, this gone by to? And uh, just, just wanted to understand that a little bit more. Secondly, on your uh, marketing spend, uh, I think gentlemen before me have asked some questions. Just wanted to understand as digital becomes more uh, and a fast and a higher percentage of your overall spend, uh, do, uh, do you see your marketing uh, spend uh, tapering? Uh, do you see your overall spend uh, tapering because those are more performance led uh, and more? Uh, uh, directly attributable to the users who uh, sign up on your platform. So I have these two questions. Thanks. See, the average age, if, if I understood your question rightly, uh, the average age of maybe around uh, sort of uh, 26 to 29, that, that forms the major sort of uh, users for the male. Female mm -hmm. be around uh, 23 to 25, that, that forms a large chunk of our uh, the base. However, if you see that, you know, uh, any growing economy, every 10 years or 15 years, the average age of people getting married slightly more up because people tend to have a higher priority towards uh, their personal growth and all. That's normally, that's a trend globally what you're seeing. As the country progresses, the, the people delay the marriage. So that tend to happen. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the spend, uh, we see at this point of time, the TV uh, uh, is continuing going to be a large form, large part of our market is in. Definitely, the shift slowly happening to the digital side right? that the growth is happening. Whether the digital is going to be a large part wouldn't, wouldn't be the case at this point of time. TV is definitely uh, our large part of our market is right? Again, the market is today is not in isolation. Again, some market obviously we have to spend <laughs> more than what is required because of uh, you know the competitor spending. Uh, yeah, more than what we think that uh, it's required to spend in all those things. But again, so sometimes you have to uh, respond to the competitive market extent so to ensure that we continue to grow and protect our market stocks. So again, if the competitive intensity reduces, obviously our three market is spent, we shouldn't be spending so much. Look at three years ago, our market is spent for the entire year was at the time of IT was 50 crore. Yes. Now it's come to say almost like 160 crore for the yes. uh, yes. So yeah, today, Actually, we are spending more than what is required, but that's an unfortunate situation. But we will, we'll, again, having said that, uh, continue to invest and continue to grow. And, uh, and maybe in the future, sometime, you know, we see that uh, the marketing is spent reduced. That's why they may get the benefits of uh, the reduced marketing expenses. Uh, so on, a, on a steady state sir, basis, like if you go back to uh, time of your IPO or let's say otherwise, 15 to 20 percent of your top line uh, spend on marketing is like a steady state, stable kind of a marketing burn. Uh, for this category, just trying to understand that. Uh, I mean, for our this this kind of this it's a, it's a, it's a similar level of competition what we are at the time of IPO and uh, our what is required to spend. But I think can you manage it under crore market expense? Sorry, hundred crore as as yeah. of now. Yeah. Compared to one sixty crore, probably you know maybe you can manage it even under crore. Mm. That's sort of tentative response. Understand that, and so just trying to understand you know, the first part of the question. Uh, uh, you mentioned that more, uh, the average age of users is growing as with the economy. Uh, uh, if on your platform, have you seen uh, like as the average age has also gone up, uh, the 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 preference of users for a particular feature or for a particular particular uh, aspect of service. Uh, has also changed, I'm just asking from a longer three, four year perspective, or it has largely remained the same. Um, uh, just trying to understand what a consumer is needing as the age goes up, basically on that. Do they need more physical interaction? Do they need better features? Do you need uh, other data about uh, the, the, the likely partner they want to uh, look at? Uh, uh, what is it that uh, is, is changing in terms of behavioral aspects? Yeah. Uh, this is the core need is to find a life partner and get married, they have to see the right number of matches and it's connected with them. So, but again, as, a, as we need to continue to innovate, continue to, you know, uh, uh, make it easy for user to discover and get connected. So, the core matchmaking platform continues going to be part of a large uh, share of our revenue. And uh, as I said, uh, we recently launched uh, Accepted Match. It, 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 it's a patent pending feature. 
Uh, and we are the first one to launch it that it shows the people the, the most relevant matches. So sometimes the online matrimony side people are bombarded with the irrelevant matches. So this accept the matches, though the number of matches may come down to the users, but the users end up using relevant matches. So we continue to make uh, progress, innovate, so that you know uh, the people are able to you know see the relevant matches and get connected and get married. However, there is any preference going to be, you know, three, four year short period for any trend to be seen now already. Maybe as a country, when people become more and more busy or other things, probably maybe uh, uh, the, the you know, need for uh, maybe the personal service is greatly can move up and all that thing. But again, it may not happen in the next two years, but again, maybe the longer will possibly that may happen. Sure, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot. This is from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last question is from Deep Shah of BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, so looking at the numbers of one of our other competitor, uh, it seems clear that uh, even with these numbers, we have gained market share. Uh, so could you just elaborate a bit on, uh, you know, what's happening in the northern market and where do we see ourselves there? Uh, that was the first question. Uh, the second question is, you earlier said that, you know, we are trying various strategies to mix pricing and uh, number of transactions, but uh, the transactions seem to be flattish now for the five, six quarters. So if we could give some more idea about uh, what's happening on that thing, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So see, we have continued to gain uh, our growth across the market. Our growth is not limited to any particular geography or market. That's a point number one. In terms of the paid volume, you know, payment is because uh, we, we definitely expect the growth momentum to continue. So when the growth momentum continues, obviously it will reflect in either on two aspects, either the volume will move up or R2 will move up. So we continue to try both of them. So when the growth increases, definitely see the, the, the reflect either in terms of volume moving up or R2 moving up. At this point of the current revenue, the current mix is the R2 at certain first place and volume at certain first place. But the outlook for the coming years when they move up, obviously we see that uh, the volume to move up as well. So. Right, so this is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Samir Parlikar of ICICI Direct. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, uh, what is the approximate breakup of our marketing spend on uh, TV and digital? Is it 71 TV, 31 digital, or it is on a higher percentage? We are not doing the absolute uh, breakup, but the measure for our spending is on TV. Yes. But any ballpark number will be really helpful. Uh, so, I think Punjab maybe around 70% or something, 70, 80% maybe on. I, I don't exact thing, but majority is on TV. Okay. Second thing is, sir, uh, so we disclose uh, any uh, premium or paid subscribers uh, for us on the call? Oh. We don't do any uh, premium paid subscribers. There's no... Uh, but, we don't, we... Uh, but the only thing is uh, we can say that uh, one of the reasons for ARPU increases, uh, we've seen good growth in the premium services uh, segment as well. Yeah, that's my service. That's my service. Okay, uh, and uh, one of the competitors uh, on the call said recently that consolidation is the way forward for the matrimony market to grow in India. So, uh, any comment from your side? Well, I think we are just focused on driving our growth and uh, continue to widen the gap between us and other players. I think yes, we are so focused, super focused on our growth. So, uh, if there are anything in the future, we may consider. In fact, for us, uh, I think we can continue to execute our strategy priorities and, uh, and uh, this, the plans were in, in front of us, I think we can able to dive through. If there are anything in the, in the future, uh, we may consider. But, uh, but anything on the mind uh, for, for, for No, at this point time, you have to focus on our growth. Uh, and okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Vivekanand of Ambit. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow-up opportunity. A uh, couple of them. So one, uh, how much money have you earmarked 
for for new product launches as well as uh, investment in uh, bangladesh sri lanka and and muslim matchmaking um, that that's one secondly we've seen that you you invested in shadi saga uh, you've invested in uh, astro also uh, and and uh, effect essentially you you've been uh, making these small acquisitions uh, in in the last last few years since you got listed uh, are there uh, are there similar such uh, acquisitions available which can supplement the current offering that we have uh, where where you would you would want to deploy your capital or or uh, you know given that now we are heading into a scenario where startups may not get funded as easily as they did in say 2021 thank you yeah uh in terms of uh, the uh, the any association other things we continue to you know if there is any opportunity which can add value to our offering so shadi saga was a good association because in and our shadi saga wedding services is also definitely one of the uh, offerings of uh, matchmaking type that we provide as part of the service of astro vision so you know it is a sort of strategic investment as well the coming to for giving the opportunity to consent and our offering the capital which we should do that and uh, in terms of the break up of uh, the, the spend wise you know and uh, we are the overall marketing team we try to you know manage uh, according to the, uh, the 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 need we try to manage uh, in the overall marketing budget it depends on some segment we see the traction we invest uh, more big and that initiatives second we are almost a strong and because this is bangladesh just uh, launched uh, to the campaign and uh, uh, all the other variants in the early stage so in next year uh, when we go to annual plan we are going to better understand how over you know again we try to manage uh, with the overall city and again it depends on the need it depends on the opportunity we, we kind of allocate uh, within the marketing part so we, because the things are dynamic in nature very difficult to how that fix the number for various segments as well but there's a broad number but some of them tend to change depends on opportunity depends on uh the 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 competition depends on uh the how the whole thing how the some other the the how the response for some of our offering as well so there's a lot of dynamic some also in some of the the new new events as well so it's very difficult to put the fixed number for various segment at this point of time okay okay understood and just uh, one last follow up so um Uh, for the international foray uh, i mean versus what you had uh, outlined some time ago versus where you are now uh, uh, I, i guess there are a few products that you are still to launch internationally right so uh, by by when when can we expect you to uh, you know do, do those launches in a full fledged manner i am referring specifically to the uh, to the product on on the muslim match uh, in international markets Muslim has already there. We continue to make progress on that that market, and uh, you know uh, we we are definitely looking at uh, uh, so some some other offering as well. So probably sometime this quarter we will we'll be able to uh, launch uh, something for international market. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, if, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, we can close the call. Chris. Uh, yes, so we have no further questions. Uh, if we, and I'd like to ask you to just make some closing comments. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks, uh, Pratik, uh, thanks, Antik, for hosting this call. Thanks, Chris. Uh, if you have any uh, further questions, uh, please do get in touch with us. Thank you once again. Thank you for your interest in matrimony.com and uh, look forward to staying in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Antique Stockbroking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>